So if you're someone like me who doesn't make RJ45 patch cables that often, picking the right tools can make all the difference in this project. So especially choosing the right connectors. Um, if you don't choose the right connectors, this job can get much tougher than it needs to be. So let me show you what you need to make this job as simple as possible. Okay, these are my recommendations. Get ethernet cable with a rip cord, and I'll show you why that's important later. The number one most important thing get a pass-through RJ45 connector. That housing is by far the easiest to use. Also, get a good crimper, and even better, if you can afford it, fork over the extra money for an adjustable wire stripper. I'll put links to all of my recommendations in the description. But if you're like me and you're not ready to fork over all the money for the best tools, I'll also show you some workarounds so that if you don't have all these tools, you can still do this project. All right, so step one, when creating your patch cable. Know what type of cable you want to deal with, right? Up here, I got a patch five. You can see that right there, the category five patch cable. And for this, I have a cat six cable. So know which cable you're using. Make sure you replace any cable with the same cable or a better cable, right? So you don't want to create a bottleneck in your network. Obviously the big difference between the cat five and the cat six is the cat six has a higher bandwidth, right? And there's sometimes some physical differences between the cat six and the cat five where the cat six can often have a larger wire diameter or lower wire gauge than the cat five. Okay. The next step is you want to cut the cable to the appropriate length, usually leaving anywhere from four to six inches of extra length on there so that when you go through all the, the cutting process and the trimming process, you have the correct length. It's usually better to err on the side of caution and make the cable a little larger than your preferred length, but you know, that's up to you. All right. So ideally you have some sort of cutters or crimpers, right? These crimpers have cutters built into them. So I can bring those over here, cut those to the right length. Boom. There we go. Obviously, could you use a different type of cutter? Sure. Right. I can come in here with just normal wire cutters, cut that as well. So either one of those will work. Okay, the next part is completely optional, but if you want to use a strain relief boot, go ahead and slide that on and pull it out of the way. The next step is you want to strip this outer jacket. And depending on the type of cable you're working with, uh, you may want to strip a little bit and then use a rip cord. I'll show you what that looks like later to strip the outer jacket. That's probably the best, most reliable way to do this. Um, but if you don't have a rip cord in your cable, then you're just gonna have to be very careful not to nick any of the inner wires. Here's something you gotta watch out for whenever you are using these. You can see I'm actually hitting that inner insulation. So one of the best ways to avoid nicking the inner wires is by using cable with ripcord. Here you can see this is uh, the ripcord right here. And what it does is as you pull on this, you're able to cut through this outer jacket, right, without having any without worrying about clipping any of those wires. So just by pulling on this string right here, show you that, right? You're just able to cut through that outer jacket. And then obviously you'd wanna trim this away and trim that off as well. So obviously ripcord is not necessary. You don't need it. And a lot of cable doesn't have it. You find it most often in what I would call commercial cable, cable that you buy, uh, you know, 50, 100 yards of, so if you don't have a rip cord, my best recommendation is get adjustable wire cutters. Um, these are not adjustable, but if you have a good set of adjustable wire cutters, that's probably the best way to go. Um, but when you do it, you want to get, you want to dial those adjustable wire cutters in and you just want to score the outside of that. Let me show you what I mean by score. Okay. When I say score, here's what I mean. You can see right there, I've nicked that wire sorry, that jacket, and I'm gonna pull it back and start to spread it out, right? So I've, I started getting it to the point where it was, now you can just sort of wiggle that jacket off. All right, just gotta, there we go. So that's the best way you can do it without necessarily having a ripcord. Another thing you'll commonly run into with Cat6 cables is Cat6 cables will often have a spline. It's just a plastic piece in here, and that's to reduce crosstalk interference. So 
you know, all you really do with this thing is you're just going to cut it to right where the outer jacket ends terminates. So you just got to come in here with some cutters, being careful not to cut any of your wires. And put those back to where they are. Okay, the next step is you want to take these twisted pairs and untwist them. Uh, one of the ways I do this is I just try to get my fingernail in there. Uh, and I slide it up slowly, especially if I can get my two fingernails in there. Just slide that up like that. That'll untwist them. Uh, sometimes the wire gauge is really heavy, and that's not that easy. So you do have to kind of manually untwist it a little bit, or at least kind of wiggle it. All right, the next step is once you've gotten these straightened out and untwisted, you got to put them in the correct order. Now, the correct order depends on what kind of cable it is and how you're using it. Um, a lot of times I'm using uh, the T568B, but it just depends on your application. And the reality is for residential use, as long as whatever you do on this side matches the same as, your, as the other side, uh, that's fine. So you can always take a peek at uh, you know, how the cables are in the other side in the other RJ45 connector. Sometimes it's easiest to look at them. Let me get that focused in there like that or to look at them like that just to see what's going on. So without going too deep into the different types of wiring configurations, the main ones you're gonna see are T568A and B. A lot of times you're just gonna use a straight through cable, which means you can cho choose to do both ends either 568A or 568B. You may need to do a crossover cable, in which case you need to have one end be T568A and one end be T568B. A lot of computers nowadays don't even really need you to create the crossover cable. They have the ability to do that digitally. Um, but I work a lot with medical devices and medical devices tend to cost twice as much and are twice as dumb. So a lot of times I actually do have to create crossover cables for some of the work I do. But depending on what industry you're in, it may or may not be necessary. So once I get them in the correct order, I just do a quick visual check, make sure I don't have two solids next to each other. You did something wrong if you put two solids next to each other, probably, if you're using T568A or B. All right, so everyone does this a little differently, um, but this is the method that works well for me. I take this, I sort of inch up my fingers a little bit, making sure to keep that order, and I sort of wiggle these back and forth, um, trying to straighten out those wave with a waviness to the wires as much as I can. So I wiggle them that way, I wiggle them this way, and I get them as straight as I can. You don't care too much about the ends here because you're gonna clip that off, but you do care a lot about this section right over here. That's right, you wanna make sure you keep that order correct as you're doing this. So the last part of that step is to come in here and cut the. So you wanna make sure you get these nice and straight, make sure they're all in order. Now the first couple of times you do this, I'm telling you, it's gonna be like these wires are Houdini and they just never go where they're supposed to go. They like disappear and then end up in the, in the wrong spot. You can see like right here, I got two striped next to each other. It's like, what, how do they do that? That's okay, don't worry about it. it happens to me all the time. Go back, take it out, restart again, figure out what the problem is. Sometimes you gotta smooth the wires out again. No big deal. The thing you can do is slide your fingers up a bit um, to try to keep those wires where they're supposed to be. But the great thing about the pass-through cable is you can check that your wiring is correct. And in this case, it's now correct. I can go on to my next step. Now the thing is, another great thing, you don't have to worry about getting those uh, this part of the cable to the correct length. You just slide the RJ45 connector, making sure you get onto that insulation there because you want that part of the, the RJ45 housing to crimp down on that outer insulation, the outer jacket. And then you're gonna give it a nice crimp, making sure you really get that pretty hard because you wanna make sure that conductor right there has gotta come down and touch the wire and it does that on all eight of those 
So that's what you're doing when you're crimping and you're also crimping down on the housing. You can see that right in there. Then what do you do with these? Well, you just trim these off. It's uh, traditional wire cutters for this, but it really doesn't matter. All right, so once you clean that up and you get those wires cut, it should look something like this. You can, of course, slide this back on. And there you go. That uh, Obviously, the next thing you want to do is test the cable. I have a video on how to test RJ45 cables. I'll put that in the description as well. So make sure to check that out because obviously you want to make sure that your cable's good. You can always plug it into a computer, make sure you're getting the correct uh, speeds out of the cable, and that should be a pretty good indicator as a cheap way to test it. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Um, but hopefully when you're done, your patch cable doesn't look like this. This is terrible and this will not work. If you do not get the insulation uh, crimped down, and I see this all the time in uh, stock images. You see this on Amazon where people are selling patch cables and they're, they actually, the, the marketing people didn't know what they were doing and they show a cable where the, the connector wasn't actually crimped down right. I see it uh, quite often actually. And the key thing to remember if you do not have the pass through connector is that you need to make sure that the length of these inner wires is dead on. And that's why I don't recommend them. It's just really hard, especially when you're learning to get every single one of those wires flush against the connector and to get it correct, uh, get the correct length so that your, your outer jacket is crimped down upon. So I hope you enjoyed the video.